Hello everyone, I'm Overhaul, and you know what, I haven't been very Halloween this year yet. So, I decided to talk about the most fucked up character, or at least the most possibly disturbing, unmorally character in My Academia, which is honestly ironic considering the fact we have people like Orphra who have, as far as we are now, did, did every single evil thing in the book. Apart from destroying the planet and killing billions of people, well, billions in case if we are sure that he didn't go and destroy an island, and or you know, a genocide island, and characters like oh, Tomoa who literally destroy everything, and Darby who looks like a literally who kind of looks like a go for my whole movie burned victim. You know, like a vengeance spirit or something like that. Which, now that I think about it, that might be intention over Darby. I mean, he has hatred for Endeavor, uh, and he is burned, and if he comes back for vengeance, that would make sense. Anyways, we're talking about Ujiku. Right now, not Darby. God knows, I wish we could talk about Darby. Huh, who knows, maybe he'll appear in the next chapter. Oh, but there's not gonna be a chapter review for this one because nothing really much happened. So yeah, anyways, let's talk about Uji Daoma Ujiko. Fake name by the way, it's just an alias. Which is fine that he gave himself a fake first name and a fake last name, even even though he could literally just say something like, you know, the doctor actually fits well. Like just just call me the doctor, like no reason to give a fake alias. So yeah, let's start with Daoma's design. His design is pretty standard, like a, like a coat, I can't know if it's a doctor or a, I think it's a doctor's coat. And a pretty standard, like it's, his design is clearly not supposed to be like, if it out there. How it's not even like basic clothing, it's just, it looks like, it kind of pipes out into your eye. Now it's just standard clothing, nothing, nothing more. So yeah, he... Zion is pretty boy except for the glasses, which kinda make him like that crazy scientist guy and you have in the cartoons, you know, that crazy eccentric one. Huh, maybe that was the original idea for him. Take a crazy scientist stereotype and just turn him to a villain and make him intentionally destructive. So yeah. Let's start oh well, I'm gonna be discussing the resemblance to a capital a little bit later. Right now let's go through what he has done in the story. Now, first thing we know about him chronologically is that he had a theory about quirks becoming more and more uncontrollable or more powerful every generation, which is the reason why Off One was interested in him in the first place. Which probably means that maybe he went open to the idea, like he, like maybe when he was at a talk show somewhere and he was like, you know, I have a new theory. I my theory is that. Quirks actually get more and more dangerous with every generation. Like, and then people didn't exactly take him seriously. You know, like maybe it was something like when a person has this crazy idea, but they, yeah, sure, yeah, that's totally believable. Like they kind of teased him a little bit, like talk behind his back. Like he was still competent. Like it was revealed in the dad book that he has a bunch of hospitals, sp hospitals. We gotta be talking about that a little bit later. So yeah. Then, Ofra came and accepted him to his fault. Then he was there when Tenko, or well, became in Ofra's adopted son for the back, like bad words, and he healed his arms and was kind of there, watching for a side, be like, "Hey, do you want me to do something? You know, I can do something if you ask me to." And Ofra was just no, he did, wasn't a big player. So yeah. Now. The last thing we know about his past is that he was healing all for when he got the ever loving shit beat out of him. He most likely also rescued him because again, he controls multiple hospitals. So yeah. Then the next thing we see, I think we see him like twice just kinda reacting to situations like USJ attack, I believe he reacted to it by losing the Nomus and I think it was one more time but nothing else. The only, the next big thing we found on the Viva, well not in the Viva card, in the data book, is that 
apparently when muscular, that John Locke needed to kill Deku. In fact, he would kill Deku if he wasn't, you know, an idiot. Or story where Deku until he got that up off to his feet have. He was revealed to have healed muscular. So thank you for that. Did he take muscular's quirk? Did he copy our quirk? Like there are a bunch of things. Okay, later. We're gonna talk about that later in a bit of detail later. But the only thing we know is that after the muscular was taken, he was about healing cam. Which means that he also, which means that he also has a good Kind of a good relationship with the hero world because he was healing on an A class villain that was studied to tolerance. And I'm pretty sure that the A class villains, it's like the higher ones of the A class are getting sent to tolerance, so yeah, that's something. Although, yeah, I think it was it's us and top possibly the a, top A class villains that get sent there. Like almost as class type of villains, but that's as far as we know. So yeah, this boy is falling apart again. Maybe I should go in to get him operate on me. Bad idea. Now that I think about it. So yeah, the next thing we see, the next time we see him is uh, during the the latest arc, my Villa Academia, where Toma is talking about him. And he kind of wants to get in contact with him, but he has no way of getting contact with him. I thought you got the Makia shows up and basically gives the legal villa and say way to get in contact with him. There he comes the old you got the Makia and teleports them to his lab. Or his house or something on those lines. So yeah. There he uh, kinda has his little personality thing, which he has like kind of an eccentric personality, which is again kind of a Reference all those wacky scientist characters in anime and also in all other types of media. And he kind of says, like, Why should I give you all the research? Because I have a bunch of high end novels, I have this, something that could confirm my theory, but you have basically accomplished nothing. Two more convinces him, he gives them money and he ha takes and uh, he manages to convince Dobby to work for him. So far, the only mission we know of that Dobby gave to Dobby is go and test out, out Haya Nomu. That's the only mission we know of so far. There might be others because I do believe there was some gap in time. I think there was like a couple of months. I think it was about two months and a half or so. I think. On this Dow's line, so I am interested to see if Doma sent Dobby for some other missions. I mean, or did Dobby like just go out and recruit people and then that was like, Hey Dobby, I need you to test out the higher normal. So yeah, we don't exactly know that. How the whole thing goes. To be fair, we don't even know if Dobby was in contact with Hawks at that point, but still. Who knows? So far, he only sent Dobby to test out the higher normal. Then, the next thing we know is that he was listening to the, you know, the formation of the Paranormal Immersion Fund. Still, still sounds like a weird name. And then after the meeting and after the, well, the bottom four executives leaves, leave the Gridastro and Trumpet, which I would like to ask, why did Geten become an executive? Because I, because, like, can someone please leave the comments me? Let me below, like, what about Geta did made uh, Toa be like, oh, you'll be one of my executives? Like, can someone explain this to me? Like, why? Was it really that book? Yeah, that, that's besides the point. Ujiko contacts Toa and tells him, oh, I guess it's it's kind of a uh, lack of a name. I'm not, it's not really my forte, but it's bad in the League of Villains. But anyways, uh, yes, I will. If you wish me, I will grant you all the power that you wish for now. Now, I would like to ask you for one small little favor, which that small little favor is still unknown. It's probably going to be either. Uh, still, this might still fire bot. That favor might lead into the movie because there does seem to be kind of a. That uh, the latest movie, I don't remember its exact name, I really know it's my Hokkaido movie 2. Kind of a developing, like maybe it's going to be like him ordering, 
Hey, can you s set some of you guys to free nights and bring him so and bring him here or something? Like we don't know exactly for now. It's probably going to be revealed in the movie or maybe later. But as far as we are concerned, so we don't know what exactly that favor is. Some people thought it was Hawk, maybe Hawks to you, but we don't know. How how did how would he even know Hawks is there? If I was, I hope see what Hawks and Dobby be like. Eh, we are just well. I might make a theory about that later, or a video about that later. So yeah, that's the last time we see until the one of the most recent chapters. I think it's like three chapters ago or something, in which it which you was asking Toma, why do you want this much power? Like you already have like over a hundred thousand soldiers, which is an insane number. You have you get to Markia, you have the higher Nomus, you have your executives. Like why do you need my why do you need this quirk, my theory? And Toma is like, because I can have more power. Like, I'm not underestimating them. If I'm doing this, I'm gonna win this. Like, no holds bars. So yeah, and Ujiko kind of like, it makes sense. So he expects this process would be dangerous, but you'll become back as a brand new man or something. Or a monster. And they basically end the whole, and that's the last time we see him. Now, to his relationship with everyone else. We haven't seen much of his relationships. It just seems he seems to have a very, a lot of respect for Ofua. Like he sees him not as insane as Jigato Makia, but still a pretty high respect for Ofua. For Tomura, he still does seem to be implying he has a little less respect for him. I mean, so a big significant, like it's not like, He's totally against Awful One's idea of making him his successor. It's just he, you know, Awful One's such a big pillar. Well, Otoma is not. Hell, when Otoma met Awful One, he was very lucky that Awful One was a already a high standard. Well, Otoma is not, wasn't even that. Like, he was below this standard. Like, he was above average. So, yeah, that's one of the reasons. And for the rest of the league or the Paranormal Division Front, he seems to have a kind of a good relationship with Dobby and not very much anything else. I mean, Kugiri, he said that he thinks Kugiri is kind of babying Toma, but that's pretty much it. So, yeah. Now, on to what his quirk could possibly be. So far, to my knowledge, it hasn't been confirmed. Like, maybe it was confirmed, it's just that Dana Bog didn't uh, contain it, but we so far don't know. I think it has something to do with the quirks. Like, maybe, he, well, like, with the Nomos, like, maybe he can also kind of steal Quirk, maybe he can copy a Quirk, but his copying Quirk is bad in NATO, Monoma's Quirk, in fact, that could be another thing, I mean, he is a pretty old guy, but now there's some other fucked up family connection between him, not NATO connected at all, in fact, there's some other relationship with NATO, but, yeah, who cares. So, yeah. My theory is, if Do Doma has a Quirk, it's somehow connected to Nomus, or it's a extreme powerful healing type quirk. We only assume. I mean, I'm going to Nomu quirk because it would make more sense, and for the healing one, I'm not so much in because, well, you don't exactly need to be a healer to be able to, you know, be a proficient doctor. If I would just imagine he is a proficient doctor, like that would talk a lot more about his medical knowledge. I mean, I do believe his that book, that it was revealed that he's a 6 out of 5 when it comes to science. Or, or was it 6? No, I think it was 6 out of 6 when it comes to science or something on those lines. So yeah. Or intelligence, not science, but yeah. Anyways, now to some of the theories. Now, the main theories, that there are two of them, is that, and the more fucked up ones are, is he the doctor that is experimenting on Izuku? I'm not totally convinced as of late, like pretty much all accepted that, and even I'm kind of like saying, if he is, alright. I mean, they do look resemble, like, like, I'm not talking about something like Kyoshiro and Danjiro, with Kyosho and Danjiro, uh, so it's, so his name is hard, where they just look very similar, like you could imagine they were being uh, young and uh, adult. But these two look almost identical. In fact, the only difference they are that's not really 
because of that is more just because we haven't seen is that that doctor that had Izuku had that little gave Izuku that little cut not a little like little drawing where he had something like on his surface hat which this one we for Uchiku we don't see it really like it's always covered by these goofy glasses so he could have that yes or not we don't know. In fact, I could imagine it being like this. You know, that, that's the difference between the brothers. Like, the good brother has a little scratch. Maybe because of him. Or maybe that's like a copy. Like, maybe if there's a the theory that Ujiko is copying quirks, he made a copy of himself, and those copies have, like, little damages. Maybe, I don't not exactly know. Or maybe that will lead into something else, like a Nomu. Like, when it's going to be with uh, two heroes. Oh, you would, you would, they would have to heal me. Yes, yes, I don't remember you. Oh, do you remember that uh, little bump or little damage I got on my hat? That was actually from a gnome I worked on. Ho 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 ho, or something like that. I don't exactly know. Now, the other thing we should address is you remember this wing gnome over here? It's very. Hakoshi, uh, when. In a volume, I don't exactly know which one, or maybe he just revealed it in an SPS or something, I don't exactly know. It was stated that the reason why Wing Gnome went after Deku had to do something with that kid with wings in Deku's past. And it was also revealed that kid is this guy, the doctors that experimented on Izuku, well not experimented, the, the doctor that examined Izuku was his grandfather. So, a wing nomu, possibly that that has a very similar, if not in them, the same quirk to that kid, is connected to the guy who looks like works on the nomus. I think also about saying why people he could be the most fucked up character, which is us to go. If that is the case, like it's kind of a tragic life. I mean, that kid who may have only been like uh you know like a regular bully. Has no bad turn to a Nobu by his grandfather, who, who knows what kind of painful process it is. Like, what if, like, are we sure those brains coming out of the bodies are because of the mutation, or is it because of he literally still abominates a person to make Nobu these guys? Although, to be fair, it does seem like globalization is normal. Like, Oh, you see John Chen over here? Oh my god. Can you imagine? Oh my god, I just figured something. What if that kid square got ripped out or whatever Ojiko did or found it? They took, he took his grandson's quirk, put it on a person, and he turned his grandson into John Chan. Can you imagine how fucked up that is? Like, Jesus Christ, that's fucked up. Now, it's also been revealed that. Oro Jiku has a bunch of orphanages and a bunch of hospitals. So, yeah, I would like you to imagine this. This guy, who could have possibly turned his grandson into, honestly, even to Nomus right now, if you think about it, ha is in charge of orphanages. And there have been a quite a few Nomus, a bunch of Nomus, in fact, seen and could possibly be like those higher normals. I mean, who's to say that he doesn't have lower rank normals there? Ha, huh? consider the fact he the higher normal had a couple of, I believe, six non normals come off, and I would not be surprised. But yeah, Ojiku could have pos could possibly have sent and like Ojiku could, could possibly take those children from orphanages, like. I would imagine that those orphanages do normal work. It's just, you know, when it comes to people like kids that become 18 or older, like, I'm not know, know exactly how these orphanages work, but if a kid turns 18, I do wonder if Ojiko takes those kids and turns them into normals. I mean, I'm not saying it could, I mean, that does kind of lessen the blow because experimenting on six-year-old kids is, 
Then I almost says, oh my god, that's way more horrible than, well, an AD. I mean, it still is horrible, like, it still is, from a morality sticker, zero is the bare minimum, and up and down, I mean, experimenting on kids dating, it's minus 99, well, experimenting on little kids, like, who aren't even 18, and in fact, the couldn't even be 10 off, is, well, minus 120. Like, it's fucked up, but... Like, maybe he does some slight things, because I do believe there has to be a reason why those orphanages are wrong, because, I mean, there's no reason for I, for people to give money to an orphanage if there are no children coming from that orphanage. I also mentioned, it, mentioned that there are a lot of hospitals that Ujiko has, so he could be possibly getting quirks from hospitals, but those kids stay the same. Although I feel like some would notice some particular pattern where it, the guy, and, or maybe he just has it like, oh, this kid's powerful quirk. And he's like, oh, for all, this kid has a powerful quirk, can we kidnap him? And of course, all right, hello, hello, uh, I will hire you, okay, here's the money, go kidnap this kid and bring him to me, thank you. Take the quirk, kid's quirk, and then just throw him aside, or, I don't know, kill the kid, I don't know, and I will turn the kid into a no more, whatever. Like, Here's how I think this goes. Over the ages, kid turns 18, he becomes a normal. Young kids only get their quirks taken away if their quirks are interesting enough. And then they are quirkless. Anyways, the kids either are too weak to have a, to have any use for this, and they're not adults. Get, they to get normal life. Kids that with powerful quirks you become quirkless, and kids that are adults become normals. And hospitals, kids with no quirks get ignored. Kids with okay quirks can basically go have normal lives. But kids with extreme powerful quirks, like I don't know if it was confirmed with Bakugo had cool quirks at that doctor. In fact, I would not be surprised if he didn't go to the uh, doctor. Uh, or maybe it's, I mean, it wasn't confirmed to my knowledge. Maybe he went. I mean, it would make sense, but we don't know. But Bakugo. But people with, you know, the real, like, buffer quirks, the, the children with buffer quirks get kidnapped and the quirks get taken away. Like, I could imagine that being the case. Like, it's fucked up. Now, may I should address how the gnomes are being created? I really still don't know. Like, I am concerned about the labanalization because I don't believe there has been a single gnomu who hasn't had their brain pop out. In fact, the closest one to a Nomu that didn't have their brain pop out are the, uh, I believe, two Nomus, higher Nomus, which even those two, I don't believe we saw, saw that well. Like, I could imagine they're just having weird style hats and then on top of them having their brains and higher Nomu having his brain covered as well as, as well as Jason Nomu who also had his, uh, had a helmet covering his hat. So, yeah. This character is fucked up. Like, I imagine only fucked up things from this character. I mean, just fucked up. This guy fucked up to next, uh, to the most fucked up character in the entire My Academia. Yeah. Now, anyways, I hope you liked this video. I hope you may leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future. Also, I hope you leave a like, subscribe to my to my channel, ring the bell icon so you're gonna be aware every time I post a video. And also, I'm planning on making a Q&A, so if you ever want to have a question you want me to answer, or you want me to look at it, leave it in the comments below as well. Now with that said, I cannot wait to see all the people next time. Bye.